Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Parame Trades. This is Parame Trades Journal. It's my personal journal. I'm not a financial advisor. This is uh, a video for educational purposes only. So uh, take your trading seriously and let's look at the charts together. All right. So this is uh, Friday the 6th. The market's closed and we're going to look at live cattle. We're going to look at live cattle. We're going to look at the COT study uh, and just do a quick update because I think we just released a video um, probably yesterday or something like that. So let's just dive into it because um, this is getting really interesting. And it's interesting because of the comparison to ZM that we saw, I think, a few weeks ago. We saw relatively high, you know, bullish commercial interest on ZM but it was shredded for um, well, a Friday close so it might have been last Friday last Friday's close uh, ZM looked, looked terrible right and comms we're on the right side of the trade because it absolutely blew up so we're looking at live cattle because live cattle is on our radar because the last two weeks, commercial interest has set new new highs here for um, net long contracts. So they are they are they are pretty positive right now, more so than they have been in the last six months, right? So a lot of these numbers are up over sixty, up over seventy. They haven't had a very positive outlook, but the sentiment has shifted considerably. Even with the market doing what it's doing right now, with the whole virus scare and, and everything else, and economies and the Fed getting involved, and OPEC and Russia and everything else, live cattle is still looking pretty bullish. So what do we what, what do we do here? What I'm first going to do is turn off this comparison. I'm really liking this tool right now, by the way. Because we were looking at uh, the Japanese yen just before this, and then let's look at cattle because this is what's cattle. This is what cattle's doing. So we had marked off that on our eight-year uh, seasonal study that March was a, a you know a time of, of decline, but we've got commercial interest as bullish as it is. Both on the three-year index and on the six-month index, this is significant. So this is a, this is a two-week hike, but the hike has continued for the last several weeks. So we've got you know one, two, three, four, five into our sixth week now. So six weeks bullish, getting bullish. Now now we're at extremes. Now we're up over the 80. We see 90. We've seen up over 100, um, and we're up at 113. So what do we have? A recipe, an absolute blistering recipe. This one, this one's hot, right? This one's this this is this is your spicy fucking dish right here. Market sentiment is declining. This is where we like to see this. WPR. I'm gonna just cut off there. There we go. <clears throat> WPR is in the oversold range. We have open interest diminishing. That's what we like to see as well. And that's what the bulls like to see. And we have commercial interest just getting, just ripping it right now. Just absolutely ripping it. Are they going to set a new high next week? I don't know. But we saw a similar move like this with comms as bullish as they were. So it looks like this gap is closed now, right? So this gap is now closed. They, you know, the market closed this out. And we saw something similar like this on ZM. And if I'm repeating myself here, I feel really bad. But I don't. I don't really feel bad about this because this is this is important. Comms are getting bullish back here, up into the 100% range, because I think we ratified this here. I mean, they, they were blazing. One, two, three, four, five weeks. And then a sharp decline. But this is the interesting part was they were getting bullish back here. 
We had that nice sell-off uh, the Friday before, and we got trapped short positions, I think. Right? There was, there was a, you know, a two-day sell-off before this thing took off to the skies. WPR was oversold, diminishing open interest, bullish comms. Market sentiment is declining. Now, this is this is going to flip flop, I think, because of the way the market is on ZM. But just as a comparison, so let's let's look here. Let me get some more data out of this here. We're going to need more than what we got. What do we got? Ten days. Oh, that's why. I need that twenty. Give me that twenty. So if we lined up open interest <clears throat> back here, where they, where they were getting bullish on this, ZM saw a terrible turn down. We, saw, we, we found a pivot, and we had commented that, are you a buyer down in here? Are you a buyer down in here with commercial interest as bullish as they are, hold, holding a positive outlook that they have? Well, we shot from 285 up to uh, a little over 310 before it topped out here. Comms are not as is optimistic now, so we missed that boat. So now we're looking at live cattle, and I hate to you know say, well this did this, so this did this, so I mean, you know, so this is going to happen, you know. Uh, well, it did it on ZM, so it's you know this this might be what happens. We're seeing a similar Friday sell off. You got to pivot. Comms are getting bullish. You know, we can't get up over this uh, this resistance here. We can't flip this. So it tops out. We get a Friday sell-off. And now we're going to get some some build-up here. Are we going to get any build-up here before this takes off? Will this take off? Because I really don't think that now is a time to think bearish. Up here, when market sentiment was a little bit higher, yeah, you might want to think about get, you might want to think short, you might want to think short up here. But with market sentiment declining, even on the 15 minute, even on the 15 minute chart, we were looking for this to move down, and this this just is a really good recipe, I think, with the way we look at commercial interests and and, and charts and and market sentiment. So we're looking for, okay, one of two things. Is this going to continue to the downside, or is this going to, is this going to come up? Now, you, I guess you could plead the case that, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, the natural gas chart, and comm has been bullish for God knows how long. I would argue that the energy sector is a little bit different than live food. So I mean we dig again and again, right? So we commented on this before. We're looking for a swing pivot. This thing got has been getting killed for a long time now, right? Comms are super bullish on this though. Why isn't it moving? <clears throat> it's been hovering in this one seven one eight range for you know for a couple of weeks here. But when you look at the uh, commercial interest chart, they they have been bullish on this for a very long time. This is one of the more confusing charts, it, it would seem. Typically, and, and I've heard from other traders too, and uh, I think even Larry Williams had reported this in, in one of his videos, that you know, typically you see a rally around this time of year. I would argue that you don't completely, at least not on the eight-year study that we have on TOS. On, on his data may be a little different. Maybe the season's different. I mean, we just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying Larry Williams is wrong. I'm just saying he was expecting a rally too. And looking at this chart, I was expecting a rally too. We got rallies when the three-year index was up over 80. We got up over 80 here. We had a small bounce, but that was the end of it. And now here we are into, you know, into March, February, March, and commercial interest is still holding, holding bullish on this. So you say, well, you know, is this, is this the case of live cattle here? Do get some movement, but not, you know, your moonshot.
so we've got two, you know conflicting charts right so here's the ng chart but the season has been a lot warmer than than it has been cattle are are, are what a very seasonal um, commodity yeah ng very seasonal commodity Weather gets blistering cold in the Northeast and in you know, and in the states, and people are are seeking out natural gas to heat their homes. But that didn't happen this year, not to the extent that it usually does. So with the market with cattle, what do we have? What 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 fundamental things that we can, can we look at with cattle to say, well, comms are getting bullish, but this is going to continue down. They got bullish back here. They were getting bullish right back in here for, for, for some time. Slowly increasing rate. And, you know, we, we did get some sell-off, and then the market rallied. So are we going to get some sell-off, or this gap is filled, and we've got a perfect recipe for um, a bullish chart here. So in the March decline for, um, it doesn't come to the end of March. So we do see a rapid decline in cattle towards the end of March, but are we going to get a rally prior to that? I think this is probably one that I'm going to load the dice on. I'm going to find a safe entry in the lower time frames, and um, you know I'm going to look for a nice pivot. Um, you know, will we get the pivot that we're looking for? Will we get a strong pivot and be a weak pivot, or is it not even going to matter? And it's just going to take off, or is it just going to? you know shoot through the roof and <clears throat> and gap up like we did here so we did get we did get that very brief pivot right this is we didn't get much here but were you a buyer here and the gap up was tremendous now is the eight point gap maybe higher so 70 78 point gap so and, and then that there's your there's your market sentiment right there. So are we, are we going to wait for that to happen on live cattle, or do you think you know maybe you could absorb some of the drawdown and see if this thing is is going to produce? Nothing showing up on the market maker stuff. I don't I don't know that if it's applicable or not. So Ellie, one to look out for. Um, I want to do this chart uh, and keep this short, and we'll do an update next week. But I, I, I'm looking for an entry here. I'm definitely looking for an entry uh, to get it, to get into this trade because this. I mean, this is what we have. These are the tools that we're working with with doing this study and this methodology is. What are, are these guys on the right side of the trade? Because I want to be on the right side of the trade. And if this takes a you know twenty point hike or fourteen point hike, I would I would love to be on that side of the trade. As a swing trader, uh, even as an intraday trader, you know I I'd love to be on that gap. Please gap up, you know eight points. I'd love that. So when market opens, we we got I'm going to pay attention, but you know personally, so. That, that's the analysis. That's the study. Thanks for tuning in. Um, stop by the Discord if you want. Um, all the channels are open to read. Um, you could private message me, or direct message me rather. And you know, if you got some questions, you want to hang around, we're gonna talk about the charts, hang out in the group, shoot the shit, whatever it is. Um, I hope you find yourself on the profitable side of the trade, and we'll see you in the next video.